Hi everyone and welcome to a brand new project by The Pause. My name is Dee and I will be your pro for this session of Learn with Pause. Today's topic is about finding sources. Many students that first begin their university studies can be confused about what sources are or how they can even find them. Worry not, this short video is an explanation of everything you basically need to know about sources during your four years at TIU. To begin with, what are sources? Simply put, it can be anything that you use in your assignment. Notice I have not said anything by other people specifically. This is because if you have other published work and you plan to use it in your current assignment, you are also using your previous work as a source for your current one. Therefore, anything that is not originally written or thought up by you for this specific assignment becomes a source. Mentioning a source in your work once you use it is known as referring to it, so basically a reference. Now that we have a basic understanding of what a source is, we can look at the primary categorizations of it. Most commonly, sources are divided into three types, primary, secondary, and tertiary. This is based on the closeness of the author to their work. What does that mean? Well, let us first look at primary sources. Primary sources are first-hand reports. They are original in the sense that they are not based on other works and contain a reinterpretation of that work by the author. For example, diaries, works of fiction, and interviews are original. They are not based on anything else. Likewise, we can include here official documents published by reputed authorities, such as governments, international organizations, and so on. This can include census data or even legal texts. Statistical data also falls into this category for this reason. Corpora, which stands for large collections of texts, recordings and speech, is also classified as a primary source. Moving on, secondary sources are interpretations of works authored by others, which, you guessed right, includes primary sources. The key point to note, however, is that secondary sources do not necessarily only interpret primary sources. Because secondary sources tend to provide discussions, commentary, or evaluation of former work, this is what you often see with previous research in academia. It is built upon the reassessment of past work by previous scholars. Examples thus include research articles, biographies, and monographs. Finally, we have tertiary sources. These, simply put, are compilations of other works. They often assemble primary and secondary sources into neat little works like textbooks, encyclopedias, study guides, and other classification systems like indices. The intention behind tertiary sources is to often provide a quick introduction of a specific field or topic. Therefore, when researching a brand new topic that you have little understanding about, it is a good idea to look at a tertiary source first. Okay, that concludes that categorization. Next is what you will usually hear about quite often during your university days, academic and non-academic sources. Based on the name alone, we can guess it has something to do with the rigor exercised in the publishing of these sources. Let us look at them separately. First up are non-academic sources. What are they? In terms of intentions, non-academic sources are written to inform and even entertain the general public. The purpose is sharing information in general. This can be by both outsiders to the industry and insiders. Non-academic sources include all forms of primary sources because they share information in this general sense. The common examples include newspapers, magazines, and popular books. Since non-academic sources do not tend to provide specific and technical knowledge, they often do not acknowledge who the author is or what sources they have used for their information. The language is casual and very easy to comprehend, given that the general public is the target audience. It should also be noted that many non-academic sources are published with a profit-oriented motive or are self-published. 
Depending on the popularity of the source itself, it will be acknowledged as a highly cited popular source, which is often a requirement for citations in TIU classes. A usually infallible example of this is popular news sources, so do use them for your highly cited or highly credible popular sources. Moving on, what are academic sources? Once again, we can understand them better by looking at the intentions. Here, the goal is not to inform the public. On the other hand, the goal is to contribute to the discipline and share information with other scholars or experts on the topic. This is what changes the approach and appearance of academic sources greatly. Unlike popular sources which are colorful, full of pictures and pretty covers, academic sources tend to be quite drab. Since the goal is to promote research, they are also less frequently published, often in periodicals, as good research takes a considerable amount of time to compile. Your best bet for finding academic sources is to rely on specific databases, which we will now look at in more detail. So, how do we find the sources? Depending on the type, your approach is going to differ. Non-academic sources can be easily found and accessed, whereas you might need to look in more specific sections of the internet for academic sources. Google, or any other search engine that fancies you, is the go-to approach for non-academic sources. However, since at TIU there is often a requirement for credible sources, we shall look more closely at some tips you can follow in order to ensure your sources can actually be used in your assignments. Let's start with a simple Google search for non-academic sources. We will use a fairly common search query, Recent Impacts of Climate Change. As you can see, a number of related websites immediately show up. You can see the specific sites associated with each search result. Where applicable, the date of publishing also shows up. These are important in judging the reliability of your source. Now, if we click on the News tab of the Google search, hit results will be filtered to show news websites and media. This is useful when you want to specifically look for news articles for your papers. Okay, let's now have a look at how to find academic sources. We will begin with Google Scholar. Google Scholar is an extension of Google that specifically looks at scholarly literature within different databases and websites across the web. Let us use the same search query for convenience purposes. Recent impacts of climate change. As you can see, search results are all academic literature. You can clearly identify the database from where each article is indexed from. You can also see the year of publishing for each source. Related searches are shown at the end of the page for useful leads on what to read further. In the left sidebar, you can see an option to filter based on the time of publishing. Below this is an option to sort by date or relevance to your search query. You can also filter by the type of article. Next, let us look at the TIU Library website. What is a university library website? As the name implies, it provides information and resources for students and staff alike with regard to the campus libraries and affiliated databases. The TIU University Library is quite similar, but for our purposes, we shall focus only on the links it provides to external databases. When accessing the TIU Library website, make sure your language is set to English in the top right if necessary. What we are looking for as we scroll down is the section named Valuable Links for supporting your research. Click on the second option related to overseas databases and journals. These include all the databases TIU provides students with free access to when using the university Wi-Fi. With that covered, let us move on to the final section, Keywords. What are keywords? The answer lies in the word itself, key. These words are the key to understanding whatever topic you are talking about. In other words, in a specific topic, aside from keywords, 
The remaining words are essentially unnecessary search terms that you can omit. To better understand this, let us look at a specific example. In this topic, how has COVID-19 impacted the energy transition process to renewable energy in Africa? What do you think are keywords? You can pause the video and isolate the keywords if you want to play along. Now, let us ignore the advice of the lazy raccoon, because just googling the entire sentence will not give you good search results. Okay, assuming you have already paused and resumed the video, let us analyze the research question in detail. One of the obviously important terms here is COVID-19. Secondly, we want to highlight the energy transition term. Both of these terms indicate the phenomena we wish to explore in more depth. Thirdly, Africa is important as it narrows the topic to a desired geographic region. Notice that we can highlight impact from the word impacted. We can change important verbs to noun forms for maximum effect. You might wonder at this point if we ought to include the words renewable energy. This is up to you, however, we already have quite a few keywords. Generally, we want to stick to as few keywords as possible. Furthermore, in the term energy transition, we imply the switch towards renewable energy, which makes it somewhat redundant. This also helps us filter articles that will only focus on renewable energy in Africa per se, as opposed to information on the transition process. Thus, we are left with just three keywords, COVID-19 impact, energy transition, and Africa. It neatly sums up our research question. Now, let us perform a search within a database library based on these keywords. In the TIU library website, let us pick a database. Since we are looking into a rather scientific and technical topic, let us click on Science Direct. When visiting any database, make sure to check that you have access by TIU. Now, let us write our keywords in the search bar. A number of articles with our keywords highlighted in yellow show up. We can look at the abstracts of each research article within the search page itself. You can also notice that a PDF download option is available for each. Abstracts are a good way to gain a quick idea about what a specific article is talking about. This helps you avoid wasting time on articles that seem related but ultimately do not delve into your specific question. As you can see here, we can look at different abstracts on different research articles and eventually decide which ones will be useful for our research question. Once you have decided on useful articles, you can easily select multiple articles and download them all together as PDF attachments or read them online as they are. To summarize, sources are divided as primary, secondary and tertiary based on how the information presented is collected. Sources are divided as academic and non-academic based on the content, motive, and target audience of the source. Lastly, keywords capture the main ideas of the research and are used to find sources more efficiently. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you learn more about sources and how to find them for future assignments. You can subscribe to our channel for more videos like this or to catch up on our latest workshops. And if you're ever in need, know that you can book a PAW at tiugti.com slash PAW advising and book a session with us for help with anything. See you soon.